Welcome back. This is L.A. Rathbone. Welcome to part nine of Slackware series two, Usa usage and configuration of Slackware. Now, uh, a lot of people have been asking about desktop oriented tasks. So that's what we're going to focus on in this episode, getting certain things set up on your Slackware desktop system. Um, and uh, this will be our second last episode. Um, in episode 10, we will go ahead and upgrade our system because I can tell you right now there's been a kernel upgrade. Um, between the time that we last updated and now so that I'll show you how to deal with that I wasn't planning on making a 10th episode, but I think that that's uh, gonna be a good idea So we're in window maker. I ran start X right, right before I started this video I invite you to do the same um, We've got a couple of uh, things here. You got our, our preferences here um, And you've got your terminal. Okay, this is an X term. I'm more of a, a console kind of guy from KDE, so I'm gonna run console That's gonna start up no more need for my X term there. I'm going to dock the uh, console over there. And you'll note that we have a lot of nice animations in Window Maker. This one is pretty epic. Explodes when you take it off the dock. I kind of like that. Uh -huh. So we can restore our window there. Um, so let's just jump right in. Um, a big thing people are going to want to do is uh, get Flash going. Um, now, if we go, if we run. Um, Firefox, um, that will then, oh, wrong command. I think it might just be Firefox. That will start Firefox up. It's not our default browser. Do I want to make it our default? No. Um, if you hold down Shift and double click on the window, it maximizes it horizontally. If you hold down control and double click the window, it maximizes it vertically. And you do the same thing and it goes back to, it restores it. And of course, if you hold down shift and control and double click on the title bar, it maximizes it. And you can also use the right click context menu to do that. Um, there is no way to get a maximize button on Window Maker though. So if you don't, if that's a deal breaker for you, you might want to use something else. So let's go ahead and go to, um, uh, ftp.slackware.com Actually, no, I'm getting ahead of myself here. That's not what we want to do right now. We want to install Flash. I'm getting ahead of myself. So what we want to do is run the super user command. And let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's just run spopkg. You should run sync. I did that on my own time, but you should run sync um, before we... Uh, um, before you start to make sure that you're in sync with the uh, slackbills.org server search for flash It will then come up hit ok We can take a look at the um, info All right, and uh, Tells us a bit about it. Robbie Workman made it. He's a pretty uh, trustworthy guy But uh, you know if you don't trust other people to be building your packages You probably shouldn't be using slackbills.org at all, but it's it, I haven't had a problem with it. So, process. We want to do all three of those things. Start. This will only take a minute. And you'll see that it installed it in the standard pl plugin location for most browsers. User lib Mozilla plugins. And it's installing, and now it's done. We can go to the main menu. We can exit our uh, Slack SBO PKG, but another. another Thing you might want to install while you're here is LibreOffice, which is a nice uh, office suite similar to OpenOffice. It's a fork of Open Office, uh, OpenOffice, and if you are familiar with Microsoft Office, then you'll um, find it pretty easy to use, I think. So let's exit uh, SPOPKG. Let's test our Firefox about plugins. That shows us the fl uh, Flash is now uh, uh, available. If we go to youtube.com, it's one of my favorite songs. Go to it. I'm not going to have audio working because I'm running on a virtual machine with audio disabled, but that is working as you can see. And you can make it full screen just like you would be able to on Windows. So that's done. Let's quit Firefox. Now let's install Google Chrome, which a lot of people prefer to uh, um, um, Firefox, myself included. So let's exit that. Let's make a new folder called TMP. Let's go to the TMP. Let's make another one called 
um, Google Chrome. Let's go to, um, we want to run NCFTP. You can do this in your web browser too, but um, I, I think that the more I can do from the command line, the better. So ftp.slackware.com. Let's maximize this. Okay, what do we have here? Let's go to pub, Slackware. You can even use tab completion in NCFTP, which is pretty nice. I think we want to go to Slackware 14.0. DIR it uses more of a DOS style of commands when you're in NCFTP. Let's go to the extra folder, which I've talked about in the past. Let's see what's in there. A bunch of stuff, but the one we wanted to focus on is Google Chrome. So let's go into there. Let's see what we have there. A bunch of stuff. Um, let's download it all. Get star. And there you have it. Okay, quit. Now we got all this stuff here. Let's move um, README, Slack Desk, and star.star into Google Chrome. Okay, so now all that stuff is in Google Chrome. Let's go to the previous directory. Let's, uh, we need to install this uh, Google Chrome PAM Solibs package. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, it's now installed. And now we want to go ahead and download um, the Google Chrome program itself from um, the Google website. I probably shouldn't have closed Firefox, but whatever. Google Chrome right here. Let's download Chrome. We want the 32-bit deb. You could get the 64-bit deb if you are running 64-bit Slackware. I refuse to use 32-bit 64-bit op uh, operating systems until I'm completely 100% convinced that there's no more useful applications that need 32-bit. And I refuse to run multi-lib because uh, I, I just refuse to believe that the performance is really any better than 32-bit. So I use 32-bit to keep my life easier. And I suggest that you do the same. So I'm going to accept and install the 32-bit deb. I'm not going to open that with ARC. I'm going to save the file. Let's save that into temp Google Chrome. Save. And uh, I'm done. I'm going to minimize that. Go back to my terminal. And you'll see here that uh, I've now got the Google Chrome deb file in there. Stable, it's always called stable current, so you just keep replacing that file with the newer and newer version as you go, and the Slack build will automatically find out with the version number and create a new Slackware package based on that. So that's pretty nice. You just go, go, go to the Google website every now and again, get the newest one, put it in your Google Chrome folder, delete the old one, and then re, rebuild the Slack build. So let's make the slack build executable otherwise we wouldn't be able to run it well we could but it's easy it's easier to do it this way and run it as root it needs to be root or, or else it won't work and uh, I'm gonna take a quick pause break and meet you back here because this is gonna take a few minutes alright we're back I'm just gonna wipe the screen a little bit here whoops okay hopefully that not what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do there. <laughs> Always getting my virtual machine and my real machine mixed up. There we go. Okay, hopefully that cleared the screen. Sometimes when I take pause breaks, it messes up the uh, the picture. So our our package is there. Let's install that package. Whoops, not in var. It's in TMP. Google Chrome. Okay. It's just verifying the package contents and so forth. While that's happening, I'll just tell you some other things you can do to configure your system. And um, if you have a printer, well, let, let's dock Firefox over here. Might as well. If you have a printer, you can um, actually let's take a look. If you look at your oops, Etsy host file, 
Um, remember we called our domain Slackware back in the day? So you can, it's localhost, you almost always call it that for reference, or Slackware would also work. So if you go to localhost colon 631, you then get into your printing configuration uh, web-based interface. And just to show, just for kicks, if you do Slackware 631, oh, well, it shows how much I know, right? <laughs> Let's try that again. Well, I don't know why you can't do that. I, that, that you got me on that one there, viewers. But anyway, localhost 631, or you could do 127.0.0.1 .0 .0 631. That should work the same way. And then you can go ahead and go to administration, add printers, so on and so forth. This, this works pretty well. I wouldn't recommend using the KDE printing configurator. It used to be good in the 3.x series, but ever since KDE 4 came out, they've never really gotten the KDE print manager to work very well. So let's go back to our other tab here. Okay, Google Chrome is now installed. Let's test that out. Um, you just run the, the Google Chrome command to run it. We want it to be our default browser. Sure, why not? Um, this is uh, There's no icon for it that Window Maker is able to, to associate, so uh, I'm having a hard time finding out which one is which here. Why don't I go like this and uh, if I double click that one, okay, that's the one that, that's associated with Google Chrome. So I can pin it over there. I can change the icon to something a little more pleasing to the eye if there is a some kind of thing here. Well, I thought there might be a nice little uh, Mozilla. A little bit of an ironic twist. Let's get, let's make the Mozilla icon the icon for Google Chrome. Okay, and that's how we have Google Chrome running. Let's maximize that. We can go again to YouTube.com. Chrome has its own version of Flash built in. So, um, you don't actually need to install that plugin like we did. Um, you can see Flash is running. Um, about Flash Player, you can go there. So Flash is working and uh, on both browsers. So I think that that's all we really need to do for that one. And we talked about printing, and um, I talked about LibreOffice is something you might want to install on your on your. Uh, your, your uh, desktop system and you can always change your menu entries by going to the preferences and going here and uh, quite frankly that's all I have to show you on the desktop side of things I think that a lot of people have their own uh, preferences for the desktop uh, I use KDE myself uh, but I used to use window maker on my older machines and it's a nice environment to use for um, uh, lightweight systems. Now, if you look at Etsy X11 Xinit, there's a bunch of links. There's a bunch of uh, example files here, and if you copy, if if you become normal user and copy any of those, so let's just say if you wanted to use KDE, you could use xinitrc.kde. Copy that to xinitrc like so, and then when you ran start x again, you'd then start x in KDE. So that's another way to do that. Um, if you, and another thing is that uh, there is no, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, automatic uh, mounter or anything like that for Window Maker. So if that's an important feature to you, you might want to use KDE instead. Um, maybe in another episode I'll show um, mounting of devices and whatnot, but that's not really specific to Slackware, so I don't really want to show that right now. Um, this is just a, you know, to give you the idea of how to get a desktop up and running. Okay, so why don't we end this episode here? And in the tenth, and f tenth and final episode, of course, unless I discover that I really missed something, I'll add an eleventh episode. But 
the tenth and final episode for the Slackware series before I move on to a more generic uh, series on uh, advanced concepts in Linux in general. Um, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your system to the latest stable uh, uh, patches, which we did before. But the thing is, there's a, there's a kernel upgrade now, so that complicates things. So I wanted to show you how to, how to upgrade the kernel and the rest of the system, and that will be in the next episode. Until then, this is L.A. Rathbone signing off. Good night and good luck.